Hi, welcome back to another weekly garden update here in Zone 8B, kind of near College Station, Texas, a little north of Houston. But before we begin, I just kind of want to give you a brief lecture. I know a lot of preppers tend to focus on guns, and don't get me wrong, guns are cool. I own guns, they're fun. But odds are, most people go through their entire life without needing a gun. It's good to have. When you need it, you really need it. But most of us don't really need it. And then a few people will talk about the three Bs, beans, bullets, and band-aids. Kind of an extension of the same thing. Once again, all good things. But the reality is, if you're eating kind of the staple of beans and rice all the time, you're going to have some serious nutritional deficiencies. And your gums will recede, your teeth will fall out, all within about two or three weeks if you're not getting proper vitamins. So... It's really easy to solve that by just growing some fresh food uh, to get those vitamins that your body needs. Tomatoes are a wonderful thing. You throw them with a little peppers, learn to can them, you got some amazing salsa. And now let's go look at the tomatoes and peppers. Okay, let's start with the uh, tomatoes. As you can see here, this tomato plant is now taller than I am. Okay, that's easy, I'm short. But... I've got a bunch of green fruit starting in there. Uh, I believe this is a big beef tomato plant. Again, I should have labeled them. It's good to do this when it's not mission critical, so you can learn these mistakes. And they also need to get pruned back a little bit, because that's got a... Okay, whatever, I'll do that later. And this is another tomato plant. Um, I am tying these off to the cages for support in a few places this entire branch or maybe it was this branch fell over in the rain storm over last weekend um, and I just came home and found it up running across the ground so I'm now tying off the big ones another tomato you can see I'm starting to get flowers these got planted a little late for and this is an heirloom tomato. Don't ask me what kind. And as you can see, that is starting to put on a lot of buds. And they're kind of interesting looking flowers. They're, they're a little more complex than most of the flowers I'm used to seeing. And the rest of the stuff in this bed is eggplant. And I'm actually getting some eggplant flowers. I don't think I've got any fr actual fruit coming on yet. But I've got flowers, so hopefully there'll be a bunch of eggplant this year. Over here in this next bed... More tomatoes. These were all very late starts, um, and I ran out of sticks and supports, so they're literally just tied to sticks in a lot of cases. Like that one, just tied off to a stick. Then down here, being mostly unproductive, are my jalapenos and habaneros. I don't know which ones are which. I suppose the two at the end are starting to put on flowers. If you look close, we got flowers. Um, Couple flowers there so hopefully when I get fruit I'll actually know what these plants are oh that one's actually got the beginning of a fruit if you look there on the right now this bed is what I believe mostly serranos once again should have labeled didn't but I've got a bunch of very small plants like these are less than a foot tall and they're producing quite a bit of peppers Serranos will actually turn red when they're fully ripe, so I'm just kind of letting these sit on the plants until they start turning red or I get really hungry. The moment I'm planning to make salsa with serranos and the tomatoes, so until the tomatoes are ready to pick, there's not really much reason to pull these. I am getting some yellow leaves on the two oldest and biggest plants, these two at the end. Those went into the ground before any of the rest, and they're starting to get yellow leaves. Not entirely sure what that is, but whatever. I'm also getting a lot of fruit off them. Over here, I have the surviving chard. Now, these have been these survived the winter, and they got a surprise freeze that dropped them down to about 15 degrees last winter. So I've started taking a few leaves off to run through a dehydrator. And what I'm finding is these leaves are really, they feel really thick. 
Um, they're, they're nowhere near as tender as the ones I was getting last year off these before the freeze. And they take a whole lot longer to dehydrate than usual. So I've harvested some, as you can see down there, like there, I just cut it off. And I've got a couple new chard plants starting. There's one. I think that's the other. That might be a weed. Yeah, that thing underneath is the other. But they don't seem to be doing very well. Looks like another weed. Anyways, over here I've got garlic growing. And this is my experimental garlic. I literally had too much garlic that I bought at the grocery store. So I planted the extra. Get rid of some weeds while I'm here. Normally garlic takes a hard freeze in order to kind of kick off growth really big. So I don't know if I'm actually going to get bulbs out of these because they didn't get planted in time. Over here I have my one surviving watermelon plant. And like this is one out of three that made it outside and quite a few more that were planted. So really low overall rate on the watermelons. But it's got vines going there. Another vine going there, another vine going all the way down there, and some flowers. So hopefully those will produce for me. Over here, we have the squash bed. Now, I've been calling this cucumbers on several videos. My wife has corrected me. This is actually squash. So I've got one squa two squash plants over on that side plus one on this side. Um, and they're putting out vines and running all over the place. And as you can see, I'm starting to get flowers. So hopefully those flowers will turn into some actual squash soon. Over here we've got the bed of miscellaneous whatever. So at the end I've got a chard plant, another chard. I think one of those chard, oh, and a third chard there, that's chard. Um, that chard at the end accidentally got pulled up when my wife was weeding and replanted yesterday. And then the rest of this we've got... Just all sorts of random leftovers. I think those are peppers, pepper, tomato, another tomato, another tomato over there. Some three things on the other side that my wife planted and I have no idea what they are. Over here we've got our bok choy forest. Uh, these haven't been getting harvested anywhere near as often as they should. And as you can see, the bugs like them. I need to do something about the bugs, but I have no idea why. What? If you have any suggestions for dealing with bugs, please leave a comment. Though, interestingly, the bok choy are producing flowers. So hopefully that means we're going to get seeds off these. I don't know quite how that's going to work. So again, if you know how to do that, tell me. Now, here's another set of tomatoes. These were planted late. Um, as you can see, I'm growing way too many tomatoes. This guy here in the middle was actually cloned from that big tomato over there the, on the other side is just a sucker I planted and it is already got one fruit growing so it'll be interesting to see how that goes and then the rest of the tomatoes it looks like nothing over here has flowers and finally over here these three things on the other side that are only a couple inches tall are peppers they're either jalapenos or habaneros and I don't know which and then over here no weed I've got a tomato, another tomato, I think that, yeah, that's one tomato, another tomato, or two, and another one. It basically, I had too many planted, so I just moved them all into whatever empty dirt I could find. And then over here, we've got the scallion onions. And this was planted so my wife would have scallions to cook with. As you can see, I have harvested some of them. The greens will regrow if you cut them off. But we aren't using scallions in cooking anywhere near as fast as they're growing so that's why I, over here i'm starting to get bulbs growing uh, there, there's some good examples so if the scallions start falling over the leaves start falling over uh we're just going to pull up the onions and there'll be bulb onions instead of scallions okay let's go look at the trees so over here <clears throat> and this needs to be cleaned and mulched is the blueberry bush this thing here is blueberry now honestly all the blueberries have pretty much been eaten by birds and i haven't got any of them same with this one's another blueberry bush here and this all needs to get mulch and i just haven't got around to it 
And then over here, also in need of mulch, is our calamansi tree, which is actually looking a whole lot better this week than it did last week. Uh, we've got a fair amount of rain. It does look like we've got a bunch of bugs on it, so that may need to get some sort of insect treatments. Overall, considering that's a tree from the Philippines, it's doing pretty well. Let's go look over at the peach tree and the corn. And we've got some chickens. They're in a different video though. You can see those guys on Wednesdays. Okay, this is the corn patch. Now, I basically just tilled up a section of the, wall, the yard and threw down some random corn seeds. And I haven't been keeping up with um, weeds and grass anywhere near as well as I should. When I get time, I think I'm going to take this section in here and till that up and put bush beans in there. And the entire reason I'm planting way over here is there's my septic sprinkler. So when we use water in the house, that pops up and does a 360 circle and waters everything over here for me. So I'm hoping I can take advantage of that and just be lazy about growing. I just need to not be lazy about planting. Okay, and let's go over to the peach tree. So this is another thing that needs mulch, but otherwise looks pretty healthy. We're still short. It's like it hasn't actually gotten taller than the support stick in the last three weeks. Um, I've seen a suggestion to take this tape off and replace that with ties, see if that makes a difference. First time I've grown peaches, so if anyone knows if that's normal for a new peach tree to stay small like that, please leave a comment. And obviously this badly needs to be cleared up and mulched. Okay, let's go inside and look at the sweet potato slips. Okay, welcome inside. I've got these, I've been going for oh, probably a month now. Uh, sweet potatoes just added in water. Okay, now if you can you can see with the camera focus, I've got sweet potato slips starting. This one is getting soft and mushy and just kind of fell down. You can see where the support sticks are up at a weird angle. That one got incredibly mushy and fell down. So I just put water in lower. We'll see how that does. And this one has got really long sweet potato slips coming up. And you can see the root system down there. So it looks like starting with the round end up is the way to go. But we'll find out later. Sweet potatoes are basically a summer crop down here in Texas. Well, one of the few things that will grow in the heat during the summer. Um, that and okra and yams. So my first time really doing sweet potatoes. We'll see how it goes. You know, subscribe. We'll do these updates every week. You can find out. But if you're not already growing a garden, you should start growing a garden. And you get to wear a cool hat when you do it.